Our next ensemble comes to us from John Hersey High School in Arlington Heights. Director is Spencer Hyde. And they have a new thing going. I'm not going to talk about it. They have somebody who's better than me to introduce the tune. So there you go. Sorry, I'm not very good at talking. Okay, uh, hi, my name is Jacob Rebsky. I'm part of the John Hersey High School Jazz Ensemble One, and we have a song that we're gonna play first that's kind of different from your typical high school jazz band song. Um, it's called The Pretty Road by Maria Schneider. It's an amazing song. Um, there's a lot of elements of classical music that you don't see in typical jazz songs in like a big band, like um, we see that in our woodwind section, doubling on flutes, alto flute, clarinet, bass clarinet, like it's, it's pretty amazing. And then on the trumpet section, we're playing trumpet and flugelhorn. So, um, and I have the privilege of soloing on this song. So thank you, yeah, we're gonna play this song now. Pretty Road by Maria Schneider, thank you.
John Hersey High School from Arlington Heights, Spencer Heil. I have a question. These are high school kids? I swear. Let me ask them. How many of you are ringers? <laughs> wow. Excellent. Now, our judges, gentlemen, come on up. Wow. Y'all are so good. <laughs> that was beautiful. Beautiful work that you've done and beautiful work that you're all doing. I hear each of you individually. You're all taking care of business individually and as a collective, um, which is the point. You know, you, you're in charge of your own station in a band and you got to handle that, but then at the same time, you're creating something together, and uh, it's very evident that you all are mindful of those two things. Um, it was great to see you having fun, enjoying the process, and enjoying listening to each other. So good. Um, very inspiring to listen to you play both of those pieces, which are completely different from each other and offered different kinds of challenges. Um, both very advanced uh, on a high level of composition and you rendered them both very effectively in terms of the intent of the composer arrangers uh, uh, or the composer arranger in the first case and the composer in the second and arranger in the uh, Second, um, just a couple things because I get sidetracked, and so it'll help me if uh, if I if I look at my sheet. Um, the pretty road, just gorgeous flow to the piece. With I wrote a well rendered detail of the orchestration. Um, there's a lot of details in there uh, between the rhythm section, individual voices that need to be brought out, and, and you were doing that very well. Uh, um, a, a little rhythm section, gorgeous th throughout. Um, at the beginning of, of Jack's flugel solo, there was a little moment where I felt like I just wanted you all to be just a little more focused together. It lost a little of the focus and there were, I mean, it's sort of a moment in the music where it changes and so, but that change still needs to, you need to really kind of honor what's happening there so that, so that, so that it's, it's clear. There still needs to be clarity in there in that sudden, in that sudden opening that happens there. Um, and, Aiden, beautiful drumming throughout all these tunes, both these tunes. One thing to think about going forward is just um, keeping your intensity. I mean, we're in a chapel, we're in a church, so it's also super resonant, ringy in here. But when, uh, when it's loud um, or when the intensity is going up and there are details that we might be missing, like piano, um, small things in the orchestration, you just might want to work you just might want to be going forward more and more mindful of where you have to place your drumming without sacrificing the beautiful intensity that you're bringing to the music. Um, uh, Grace, uh, you are MVP of that piece. Uh, just fantastic, you know. Um, uh, I just loved hearing you sing and play, um, and and this beautiful f uh, floated section of 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 trumpet and flugelhorn. Those those interweaving uh, moments was so beautifully done. Um, as it got to the end of that piece, just I, I should probably wrap up. Um, the tenors and the voice, that beautiful melody 
just think about the lyricism of that melody and how you can almost make it as though the three of you are one instrument. Um, gorgeous. Um, Olio, and, and I just found it very, it's such a beautiful piece of music. I mean, it's on its own and you just brought that out and that's the point. You know, you wanna hit us here and that's what you're doing. Um, Olio is a little different. Um, it's, it's bringing out a different language, um, bebop language. Be I was thinking, gosh, you know, bebop language is about 80 years old at this point. And we're, f we're farther away from, from the impetus of that kind of language and that kind of time feel. Um, so something I think just in terms of your own listening, more and more kind of just deep, deep in listening to, to what now is, is much older music. Um, uh, the flow of the eighth note, and then that piece has that kind of dichotomy between that double time and that half time. So the, most of it's on, on the rhythm section to really keep us in that groove. But then when a melody comes, you just, it's got to, it, we don't ever want it to feel like it's kind of starting to get, uh, the wheels of the bus are starting to get a little rickety. We want it to be a finely tuned machine a little bit more like the first piece that you played. So I just would encourage just a little more mindfulness in terms of the, in terms of the swing feels and, and go deep into those. It's more than I can really address here right now. Um, Aiden, beautiful final setups uh, to, to those final ensembles. Um, great solos all around, great blend, and I appreciated everything that you brought, especially your presence and your musicality. And uh, just congratulations. Where, where are you all from? Uh, Arlington Heights is Illinois? Yeah. All right, something must be going well in Arlington Heights. So, <laughs> thank you all. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be really sure. Wow, what an experience. Trumpets, go trumpets, and vibes. It's really good. I don't know what to say. Other than it's so obvious that you put the work in individually and collectively. I do want to ask, uh, you look like a guy I went to college with. Holy cow, he played trumpet though, so I know you're not him. Plus I'm old now, I'm sorry. I get distracted really early, <laughs> easily. Uh, I want to ask about the, um, the free improvisation section on, on the first piece. It was unbelievable for one that you're approaching free improvisation the way you did. So uh, how did you approach it? Did you have a rubric or some, some system of saying that this is what we want to say during this section or is it pretty much what happens in the moment? Yeah, how did you how did you practice that? How did you work on that? Okay, cool. Sure. You know, and like that is, you know, the stuff like that is what really adds to that color and that like Excellent. Some of it is like very hand Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's so much you can do with that. You go ahead. Yeah, but again, there's so much you can do with that. You can tell so many stories individually and collectively too, you know. But I, I would suggest to really every time you play it, purposely play it differently, just so that you can you can live in that moment. And lastly, man, I love your dancing back there, man, bass man. You know, and that's it's it's so important because music, jazz is a music of dance, you know. And if you can't feel it, how can you play it? 
you know, and the audience picks up on that, man. And, and even in the, within the ensemble, there's just the, the head nod, the groove. You feel that collective groove, you know, as opposed to just, you know, just playing. Wow. Thank you so much. Oh, you got it. You didn't hear the... They want to hear Um. Yeah, wow. I mean, it's awesome to hear you guys. Actually, the first piece as I was listening, I, I, halfway through, I said, oh, I'm supposed to write stuff down. So I, I had to, you know. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's really awesome to hear that piece out front. I've never heard it performed. I've played it a lot of times because I play in Maria's band, and I played on the original recording of it. So um, it was actually really cool to hear it played a tiny bit differently, too, than the way we play it. And actually, kudos to you guys not getting lost in the solo section, because sometimes in our <laughs> in the actual band, when we haven't played it for a while, it's like, oh, wait a second, was that the eight-bar phrase or was that the eight-bar? No. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, awesome that you memorized that whole, whole solo section, you know? Um, you know, uh, yeah, and I mean, obviously, and I could also hear that you knew all the harmonies. It's, it's great, you know? And I love that you, you took your time getting into the solo, which is... It's a long, it's a long way to go, right? So the the way you approached it, I think, was was great. A um, couple of, like just tiny details, but it's, I mean, it's also awesome that you guys are doubling on alto flute and and the doubles are strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, I write a lot of doubles in my charts, and and sometimes it's hard to find people who can play them, so I know where to find you guys. Um, but. Um, Little things like, like I love the way you sang the voice, uh, the, the vocal part. As instrumentalists, I think our goal is to play our l melodic lines in that same way, you know? And to, to be able, you know, I'm always thinking about when I practice about trying to increase the bandwidth between my ear and my, and my slide, right? Like less dialed up, more fiber optic in terms of direct stream of consciousness of my inner voice, right? Um, so, for instance, uh, who was playing soprano at the beginning of Pretty Road? That was you, yeah. Really great, just a little flat when you came in at the beginning, right? So that's, I mean, and, and to, that, that we're actually talking about these little details. I'm not picking on you. It's just, like, it's awesome that we can talk about these little um, fine-tuning things of the music. But, um, but all the parts, I think that's the same case. Now, trombones, I'm curious, like, where I was sitting, I couldn't quite tell. I see you all have your stand, stands angled, but it still felt to me like you're kind of playing down which means you kind of, your sound was kind of going, I, I wanted to hear more of you guys. Um, what, what's your name? Ben. Yeah. Ben. ben. Look how Ben set up. He's like, I'm going to be heard. He's got his, his stands like pra practically off stage, and he's just, um, but I know it's hard, hard, you know, when you just get thrown on stage and you have to perform like that. You didn't do it, really do a sound check or anything, but um, so anyway, you can just get your bells up a little bit more. I couldn't, I couldn't see, but I, when I'm playing in, in this music, you know, I, I kind of sit on the edge of my seat just to be able to get as much air in as possible, you know. Um, but anyway, yeah, going the rest of the piece, I mean, the, the whole middle section, that was great, you guys. Is, does it say in the chart what all those little things are? It's like sketched. Like but does, she, does it say what her intentions were? No. Oh, okay, so there's like, um, it's all stuff from, from her childhood. Like, so, like, uh, her, one of her childhood friends was named Hopi, and so when the tenor goes, Hopi! That's, that's supposed to be her, her friend's mom yell, t t telling, telling her to come to dinner or whatever like that. There's parts of Henry VIII, the eighth I am in there, which was, I think, her parents, maybe her parents' wedding song or something like that. Yeah, so there's all these little things in there that they have a lot more meaning than just, like, random things, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's a really cool, cool piece. Um, um, other, just a little thing. I, I love the way you're playing. The, you played a couple fills at the end of that boom, ding, 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 and I wasn't really convinced about the fills. I didn't really know. I was like, to me, it kind of like got in the way a little bit. You know what I mean? So just if you're going to play something, make sure it's really clear and concise. Um, also, that little section, it just felt a little bit on the edge. Ding, ding. I wanted the, ding, ding, the end, of, ding, end of three. Is that what it is? Ding, 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 ding. Dun, 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 dun. I just wanted that to relax a tiny, tiny bit, but, um, but yeah, really great job. Um, and it, in Olio, I, you know, some of the same things they were talking about. Um, for me, just this, swing is hard. It's a, it's, it's really hard, and I just felt a little fluctuation in the, in the time, 
um, at times, you know, especially the melody. I mean, it's hard for you, uh, the Barry player, what's your name? Grant, yeah, great playing on the melody. It's hard because you're way over here. Same thing, no, no sound check. It just felt like when you came in with that melody, it was pulling, pulling back time-wise. I mean, if you just lighten up a little bit and try to dial into where they're at, you know. Um, a lot of great things in the solos. Um, comp comping. Like, I mean, you guys are in high school, so this is like a, but you don't have to play all the time. And I know these are shorter solos, but, but, um, I love when, when a rhythm section gives me, gives me space to, to improvise so that they don't do stuff that forces me into playing what I already know, if that makes sense. So, and I, it's a hard thing, to, to, you know, like we're just, just the fact that you guys are playing rhythm changes and comping is already a great thing, but just going forward, something to think about, like how do I maybe comp a little more sparsely so we give them a little more room. Um, man, great, great lead playing. I wanted you to play, support your, your, your solo with that same confidence that you support your lead playing with. Does that make any sense? That's something we always do as brass players when we solo. We kind of let, not that, it still sounds really good, what you're doing. I just wanted a little bit more support from you, like to look the same way. But anyway, guys, fantastic job, fantastic job by you. Yeah, so I can't wait to hear more. What, what do you play next? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> just an astonishing performance, just uh, so beautiful to hear you. And uh, so, as baritone player, you get to play the melody, right? You don't get to blow, though. <laughs> Sorry. I wanted to hear you play after playing the melody. But anyway. Um, just, I want to talk to just two minutes, because I think we're kind of close to time, to the improvisers, to the ones who, you know, people in the band who really want to become deep improvisers. Well, I mean, you played so beautifully already. But I mean, we're really committed to learning this music and becoming a soloist. An important thing, and in, in, uh, at least to me, I think it is, that we, we all need a hero. We need to have someone on our instrument that we emulate. And it's important to go through a very long period of imitation of copying, of imitating, and trying to build our improvisational style on someone else's voice, and then your voice over time will emerge through that. That's a really important concept, I think, that's not often addressed. Uh, and it, it takes a long time to kind of find your personality on your instrument. It's a long, long, lifelong voyage. I mean, if, you know, I mean, even Charlie Parker and John Coltrane, they had heroes, and they copied, and they imitated. And then their voice came through that. So you need some, some voice that, you know, your personal voice is going to come through that as you mature and as you develop. So then, it, um, I mean, that's your, that's your choice who that is. I mean, when I was playing alto saxophone, my hero was Phil Woods. I mean, I did everything like him, including dress like him, wearing a hat, had the same neck strap you know, kind of held my mouthpiece on the same angle. I was really like, uh, you know, was, there was an important part of my development was copying and imitating. And then over time, then baritone, it became, you know, Pepper Adams through a long search. And, and eventually, you know, not to be in a hurry, and you'll find your own voice and you'll find your own way into this music. But that's, that's an important um, tool in your growth is to like, to have a hero and, uh, um, you may already have that, but uh, if not, think about that. That's that's uh, that's will really kind of give you a, a strong forward path to finding your own voice, because you have to kind of find your voice. It'll emerge through another voice over time. So that's just uh, just some food for thought. But thank you. It was an astonishing performance. I'm really inspired hearing you, and uh, wonderful directing. You're an incredible musician, and uh, really doing incredibly gorgeous work with these young musicians. Thank you. Yeah, buddy. John Hersey High School, and that's Spencer Heil, their director.